Retro Rendering is a blueprint function library designed to render static and skeletal meshes in an old school style. Recreate the authentic rendering experience of the 90s with per triangle rendering order management, reminiscent of early polygonal graphics. Render textured or untextured polygons. Textured surfaces are rendered using a fine texture mapping technique. Custom sort priority enables you to draw certain meshes behind or in front of other meshes, regardless of their position in the world. Achieve pixel perfect alignment of vertices for that signature blocky aesthetic of the 90s. Eliminate your scene with classic vertex based lighting calculations. Add subtle noise and dithering effects to smooth out color gradients. These are just some of the features of the retro rendering function library. This plugin comes with an example widget to show you how to create your own 3D scene. Now I'm going to show you the steps needed to render a mesh with this plugin. For this simple example I'm going to create a new widget, but you can do this pretty much in any blueprint. The first step is to create a render target. Make sure you use the specific function that comes with the plugin and not the default create render target node because this function will create and assign it to the view info variable and it will also set the aspect ratio based on the dimensions of the render target. Add a border to the widget and assign the retro rendering material to it. This material will dither the render target and it's used for camera fading. Also make sure that the is variable is checked. Now get the dynamic material of the border and set the texture parameter. The parameter is called render target without spaces. Now let's get the rendering data of a static mesh. If the section index is set to a negative number, all sections will be retrieved from the static mesh. Use a valid section index to retrieve the render data of a specific section. Make sure you promote the return value to a variable. After that, add render meshes node. Connect the mesh render data to it. It will automatically convert it into an array. Also connect the view info variable and make it public so that you can modify it in the widget designer. The reason why nothing is visible is because the virtual camera is inside the mesh. The camera by default is facing the X direction of the world. So to see the mesh we need to move the camera slightly back on the X axis. Now we can see the mesh, but it doesn't look like the bottle in the demo. It's white and semi-transparent. Well that's because of the vertex colors of the mesh. Before we continue I'm going to change the resolution of the render target. The aspect ratio in this case is too far off. You can modify the vertex colors of the mesh render data. The RGB channels control how emissive the mesh appears and the alpha channel controls the transparency. The final step is to apply a texture to the mesh. And that's the end of this simple tutorial. Check out the demo widget for more complex examples.